Hey guys, so in this video I thought we should capture or go over one of the most asked questions that I get all the time on Instagram and that is how I export my videos. But to make sure that we go through it all, I'll go through the timeline settings in DaVinci first. These could be universal for Premiere Pro and Final Cut, I'm pretty sure. I haven't used Final Cut, but these are the settings and the quality that I shoot in to get the quality that I have on my reels on Instagram. So I think we should just jump straight into it. So let's hop into DaVinci. So we are inside DaVinci and the only thing I've done so far is to open a new project and I've called it DReel 115. That's the next reel that I'm gonna make. Just to show you what the first things are. Right now we have no timeline, we have no anything, but you should go to the little thingy down here. I don't know what it's called in English. And these are my settings. So because I'm still on the free version of DaVinci Resolve, I can't export in 4K, but honestly, you don't need to export in 4K. Uh, I export in 1080. So to get the vertical mode, I have customized it to 1080 by 1920. And my timeline frame rate is 29.97. You could use 30 frames as well. It depends on what you shot in. I shoot all my content in that. And if you do it for Instagram, that's quite important because Instagram is in 30 frames per second. So if you shoot in anything lower and your timeline is in anything lower, it'll get choppy. That's just how it is. It's unfortunate, but that's how it is. So after saving that, you, you would click save, obviously. You can go in and you can make a preset. I have my reels here and you can save that as the user default config. The one that you just used or the current project that you're on will be the one. Save as user default config and then you name it something and that will be what loads every time. So if we make a timeline now, create a new timeline, call it real. Then if you open that timeline, like so, you can see that we have the vertical format. So that is all I do for my timeline settings. Let's just drag in a clip to show you what it looks like. So it'll scale it down. So we can just check what resolution it is. So we have double clicked on it now, we've selected, and you can see on the file over here, you can see that it's 3840 times 2160. And that means that on the upper side or the, you can say the height, we have uh, 2160 pixels. And as you remember, our timeline is, let's just look at it here, it's 1920. So when we pull in a clip, right now it's just scaled it down. I usually go 1.8, oh, sorry, that's for the other way, 3.3. And that scales it up. And if you scale it down a little bit, you'll see that you could actually go like 3.2, but I just go 3.3 just to make sure. And that means that you may, you actually lose no quality at all because you still have all the pixels. So you crop out the sides, obviously, but you still have all the pixels available. Now, if you are going to do the other way around, as you might have seen me do on my Instagram quite a few times, I would go and set the rotation to minus 90 and then set the zoom to 1.8 and that fills out the frame as well. And you lose even, like you've just basically just scaled down the 4K. So you get even better resolution than probably if it was in 4K. So it's 1080 scaled down from 4K. So that's the exact settings that I use for my timeline and for my clips. And just to show you very quickly how I import the sound, so this is just a screen recording from my phone with the sound. I'm not gonna show you the sound, but you can see that I would just crop it. I'm just gonna do something sloppy and then drag down the sound. I would then take my clip, drag that on top, probably just cut it here and delete the rest. And that would be our reel. I don't have any sound on right now, but now we have the sound in here. So screen recording, add dropping onto my computer, and then I'm just dragging it in and then I'm stealing the sound from that so I can cut to the sound if I need that. So that's basically all. Then I would do my color grading, obviously, make sure it's Rec 709 in the end, and then go to the export settings, which is what you've been waiting for. So I have my Reels template here. So when I select that, it'll give me the file name because that's how I named it originally. So I would just say 115 because that's the one that we add. I would choose my location. Don't need to do that right now. Usually just the single clip, unless there's something specific, but for reels, always the single clip. Now, format and codec comes down to the phone that you use. I've heard 
So for my case, I use an iPhone. So QuickTime is the best to upload with then, but you could just use MP4 if you have something else. You can try it out. Maybe MP4 works completely fine. I have had fine results with uploading MP4 as well. And then I use H.265. You could use H.264 as well. Don't know how much of a difference that makes, but you want to see my settings. So this is what I do, QuickTime and H.265. Then of course the resolution is still set to custom. Make sure that it's still the custom settings. If you do this the first time and you are just a custom export, it might have been set to 1920 by 1080. You will see it up here that you have black bars in the side. So just change that by hand. And one thing you always want to check when you are exporting is that it's set to the correct frame rate. Sometimes I've had issues where if I import the sound differently or something like that, the frame rate changes. So just keep an eye on that. If you happen to have the wrong frame rate, I'll show you in a second what you can do if you already cut everything and you have the wrong timeline. But just to go through this, the last parts, for these, I don't do anything. Quality, I've restricted that to 45,000 kilobytes per second. If you're on Premiere Pro, I used to use 45 uh, megabytes per second. So that's the same thing. I haven't limited any data rate and then optimize for speed, I think it's on by itself. I think this is default as well. Can't remember if multipass encoding is on. I have had, haven't seen any results using that or not using it. So I'm not really sure if it makes a difference, but I have it on sometimes. If I want to render in a, in a smaller size, sometimes I take it off. Haven't really seen a big difference, but I have it on just for safety. And the rest of it is just default. I haven't done anything. So what I would do from here is just add to render queue, render it, and then find it in the location that I stored it in, add drop it back to my phone, and then uh, upload it from my phone. So that's basically it. But let's say that the frame rate is now 24 frames per second, and you're like, fuck, what did I do? Let's go back to the settings, and let's say that your timeline is wrong. You can't change, if you go to timeline settings, you can't change anything because it's locked now that you have edited something down here, you can't do anything, which can be quite frustrating. So what you can do is you can make a new timeline, you can just say real two in this instance, and then tick off this because then the project settings might be wrong. And if you forgot to do the first step that we showed you in the beginning, this is what you can do as well. You can go in, customize the size and select the correct frame rate and then click create. Then you will have a new timeline, which is obviously empty. But if you then go to the other timeline, you press in my case, command A to select everything, or you can just drag your mouse over it. Command C or Control C, I think it is in Windows. Go to the other one, make sure the marker is in the beginning. Command V, Control V if you're on Windows. And then you got it in here. If you go to the export settings, you will now see that the frame rate will be correct. Now, in our case, it was from the beginning, but that's how I do it. So that's a way that you can change it up. If you forgot to do the timeline correctly in the beginning, don't worry, your work is not wasted at all. Just make sure that that's it. And for a last track, let me just show you how to easily make sure that all your clips are in the correct frame rate. So let's take a clip here that is from my camera, drag it in. And if we right click on it, clip attributes, you can see that this is in 59.94 frames per second. So to get this to the correct frame rate, instead of trying to skate it down and slow it down, you can simply just click this frame rate, 29.94. 97 and then click OK. And then as you will see, if we double click on it now and play it through, you'll see this is in slow motion. So this is half speed now, obviously, but the, no matter what kind of frame rate you have, unless it's lower, it'll still work, but you will just, you will have dropped frame. You can try to work around that if you shut everything in 25 frames, 24 frames or whatever, but I'm not an, an expert in that since I figured out that 30 frames was the right way to go with Instagram Reels. That's what I've been doing ever since. For TikToks, it seems to not matter. I have had perfect results posting 24, 25 frames per second on there. But for Instagram Reels, this is the way to go. So that's an easy way to make everything slow motion. And you could just select all the clips that you have, right click on it, clip attributes, set it to what you need it to be, and then all good. So that's basically my settings for exporting my reels to Instagram. That's how I do it. That's all the settings that I do. And if you don't get 
the same quality out of it. I hope you do. Uh, I really hope it works. But I have had a lot of people say that they use different settings and they get varying results. Sometimes it seems to be an Instagram bug. Some people say that it matters that you're on well internet or fast internet. I haven't seen that exactly. Uh, I haven't tried to upload on really slow internet, but sometimes it is quite slow and I've still had pretty good results. Yeah, so I think that's pretty much it. I hope it helped you. If you got any questions or anything that I didn't cover that you need answered in terms of the export settings and the timeline, just drop a comment down here and I'll be happy to help. So otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one.